Hi, it's Rhonda Kuning back again with another file folder art journal piece. Starting off with a pre gessoed folder, adding some ultramarine and cobalt blue, some watercolour medium, which you could use uh, glazing medium, a little bit of retarda, and some water just to put down a wash. Spray a bit of water on just to make it stay wet while you put the clear lunch wrap on so that you can move it around a bit and then I waited till it was dry before I took it off and you can see it makes a lovely texture it's really interesting almost looks like water but and because I didn't mix the colors completely there's a lovely range of different blues in it I, I really love this effect which is why I do it again <laughs> And uh, yeah, I wanted to soften that circle, so I used a baby wipe to get rid of it. And just using some more gesso over the top because I didn't want to muddy the colours that I'm using over there. Same mixture again of the red, uh, it's alizarin red, I think, with uh, some glazing medium, a drop of retarder, and some water. And this time I took the lunch wrap off while it was still wet. It gives a softer texture than if you leave it until it's dry. Now I just used watered down paint with the yellow because it's such a small area. And I knew that I didn't need to worry about moving the paint around. So I'm almost using the glad wrap as a stamp. You still get the texture but it's a lot lot softer. Now to frame it in I've got a watercolour crayon and I'm just going around the outside and of the file folder and then a big wet brush to smudge it in. And then I realised that the blue looks a bit strange so I'm adding a bit more blue to it with a watercolour crayon. The good thing about that texture is it makes drawing on it with the watercolour crayon so easy. Now some white paint so that it looks less like a target and more like a light source which is the idea I had in mind when I started. <laughs> so the middle part has a couple of layers of white paint and now this is all dry and I've got some acrylic inks. I end up just using the yellow and the black. I don't end up using the blue to make a nice green. I was going to make two different greens, which is why I've got the two puddles of the yellow there, but I end up just using the black. But different amounts of black will make different shades of green anyway. because I couldn't find my pipettes I used a paintbrush to add the drippage and that worked fairly well although it took longer than it would have if I had have had the pipettes to use and it makes more natural looking branches or stalks or whatever you want to call them now they are dry and I'm just making the leaves with the same mixture but there's a bit more yellow in the mix this time as you can see the the leaves are a, a, a shade lighter I end up using about three different sizes of brushes to give different sizes of leaves and I decide halfway through to use Indian yellow paint instead of more ink to mix up the next batch of green for the leaves it makes the those leaves are a lot more opaque than the ink ones having the different size brushes makes the leaves look a lot more natural because they're all different sizes as well as different shapes you could do it all with one brush but it's much easier to do it with a couple of different brushes now this is just I'm just using black acrylic paint and just painting the very simplest, roughest of uh, butterflies you can imagine. 
and again I use different size brushes to force myself to make different sized butterflies. We start off I started off with the small ones first. You could start off with the big ones first if you wanted, but I found it easier to do the small ones. As you can see, if you don't like it one, just wipe it off with the baby wipe. Just don't paint straight over it until it's dry, otherwise it'll blur. Now, to make more realistic looking butterflies without the work, I got my stamps out, archive link pad, a trusty ruler, because I couldn't find my acrylic block. It's here somewhere, but my ruler was sitting right next to me, so why go searching when you don't need to? And that is just printer paper I'm using. It's no special paper. And some watercolour pencils. I chose the yellow, the orange and the red because I knew that predominantly orange colour would contrast really well with the blue that I've got as the main colour on my page. And just wetting all those while this, well, before I cut them out because it's just easier. You don't have to worry about keeping inside the lines. And once I decided which ones I wanted to use, I took those stamps and put them where I wanted the butterflies to be. That way I don't have to worry about cutting out the bodies and the antennas. I can just cut out the wings and glue them over the top because the stamps will put the body and the antennas in where I want them. If you're using Archival Link, you really can't clean it off very effectively but it's a good idea not to let it build up too much on your stamps so I just cut those out put them down with some Mod Podge the bottom one I've got hanging off the edge and you can see they look really they really stand out against that blue. Cut off the excess. Of course, I waited till it was dry before I did this. And then go around the outlines, and I really had to redraw in the body with the pit pen. Now, for some words, I've got these uh, stencils, um, had them, and been collecting them from stationery shops and two dollar shops and they make my writing look exceedingly neat which it isn't normally I just went did it with pencil and then I went around it with a white Sigma pen I'm doing that now and then I I get my pit pen back out and go over the um, the lead pencil because while I wanted it as fairly subtle it was a bit too subtle <laughs> especially with all that colour there the black it needs the black then I make the mistake of using my own handwriting and yeah it's not the best look I'm not the happiest with that part of the writing but hey it's okay it's part of the learning process and I I was going to go around the whole thing in uh, white Sigma pen but I had such trouble getting it to write on that textured surface that I decided not to. I tried to write the verse out on the page in the black but you couldn't see it and it didn't matter what I used so I decided to print it out on the computer and to make it a little less stark looking I'm going around with some dist distress ink and some water to smudge it all in. I made the mistake of not spraying this with enamel, which is what I normally do. If I do a computer printout for an art journal page, I usually spray the page with enamel before I use it, because that way the ink doesn't run when you wet it. But I didn't do that this time. So yeah, I waited till it was dry. It still looked a bit too stark, so I thought if I add some blue to it, it'll look more like it's part of the page. So that's what I did. I was trying to bleed the blue with the water and then the alcohol ink sprays, but yeah, it didn't work. But I was quite happy with the way it was. And 
I wanted to keep as much of those wrinkles in as I could so that's why I'm gluing it down the, the way I am and squishing it with the paintbrush to keep the wrinkles in otherwise you can iron out half the wrinkles with the brush and that's about it I just sign it my big head in the way and done quite happy with that and if you want to see more of it just have a look on my other videos on my YouTube channel and I have a Hope in Heart website as well. Bye for now.